all for joining us today as we celebrate the first Sunday after Christmas. We begin our worship today with hymn 332, Savior of the Nations Come. May God bless our worship today. Upon this, your 
I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loyalty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 4. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thoughts from many hearts 
may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Enuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God, and to speak to, of Him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Last week we heard of the wonderful confession of Mary given in the Magnificat. And today we hear a wonderful confession yet again, this time from Simeon. Now I love this person, Simeon. He, there's a, there's a neat story about him in the church that says that he wrote the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And that as he was writing Isaiah chapter 6, that's the one that goes, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. That as he was writing that, the angel came to him and said, Hey, when you're translating this, make sure you translate this virgin. And that's because in Hebrew, there's one term which is ambiguous. It can either mean a young woman, or it can also just refer flat out to a virgin. But well, there's two different terms for that in Greek. One is a maiden, the other is virgin. And so the story goes that the angel came to him and said, Hey, translate this as virgin, and behold, you're going to see this. You're going to hold this child before you die. Now my favorite part about this story is that the Septuagint was translated about 200 years before Christ came. Meaning, if this story is true, Simeon would have been alive for well over 200 years. Now, at first that sounds kind of astounding, but then you start to think, I don't know if I want to live that long. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of horrible things that go on that you would have to live through. That's a long time to be here and away from our Lord. To be here and away from God. To live in sin. Could you imagine Simeon finally, after all that time, holding the Lord's Christ, holding the Savior? So it's no wonder he makes this wonderful confession. So let's go through this confession a little bit and see exactly what he means. He ends this by saying that this child is for the glory of the people of Israel. It's for their glory. That's what Jesus is for, for Israel's glory. Now Israel has been enslaved for a long, long time. They have not been glorified. They've lived in the muck and they've been beaten down. Ever since Adam and Eve first fell into sin, first they were enslaved to their own flesh, enslaved to sin by that point forward, then Abraham had to fight for the promised land, and they, they, they didn't even get to keep it then. They were enslaved in Egypt. And once they finally got out of Egypt, they were enslaved again by the Assyrians during the Babylonian captivity. And once that was over, they were enslaved by the Greeks. And once that was over, they were enslaved by the Romans. Israel has not had a glorious history. And now Simeon is saying that this Christ child is for the glory of Israel. They're finally going to be set free from their captors, from their own sin. And better than that, it's not just for the glory of people, but it is a light or revelation to the Gentiles. This Christ child, this Savior Jesus, is not just for Israel. He's for the entire world, and thanks be to God for that, because I don't know anyone in here that has a drop of Jewish blood. And Jesus is our Savior, too. He is a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And then you get this interesting phrase, that Jesus is the salvation which God has prepared. That's a weird way of talking about something. A salvation which God has prepared. This is actually the type of language you would use in the Old Testament to talk about a sacrifice. You prepare a sacrifice. And really that's the only way to be cleansed from our sin. That's the only way that our sin can be washed away and done away with. It's not like God can just say, oh you sinned. But it's okay, I'll forget about it. No, he's righteous. He's holy. He's perfect. He can't just say, oh, it's okay, let's move on with life. That's not just. That's not getting what we deserve, which is death. And 
So somebody has to take the punishment. In the Old Testament, that's why they had the sacrificial system. That's why they had the temple. Because the blood of goats and bulls and pigeons and all of these things would atone for, would make up for the sins of the people. There has to be a sacrifice. Someone or something has to take the punishment. And so when Simeon says that this salvation has been prepared by God for all the peoples, he is saying that this is a sacrifice which has been prepared. The perfect sacrifice to take the punishment for all our sins. Again, imagine Simeon living these 200 years, experiencing all the sin around him, experiencing the sin he commits himself, and knowing that, okay, I'm sacrificing these animals to cover the sin of the people and to cover my own sin, but it's not enough. And then to hold Jesus and say, this is the sacrifice. This is the one who's finally enough, who atones for my sin. So all this considered, it's no curiosity. I'm not, it's no curiosity that he says in the very beginning of his confession, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Because his sin put him at war with God. There was a wedge driven between him and God, and it was his own fault, his own sin, which did this. He was going to experience the wrath of God. He was going to die eternally until he held the Savior, Jesus. And now, he has peace. He has peace with God because the sacrifice has been prepared. His sins are going to be covered. And he is going to be reconciled with God. Now he can finally depart in peace. And when he says this, he doesn't just mean he can leave the temple and go home and retire in peace. What he means is he can finally die in peace. There's no more war, no more conflict between him and God. He doesn't have to worry about his sin anymore. His sin is covered. The sacrifice is here. He has felt it with his own hands. What a wonderful, wonderful confession. Now you notice, <coughs> these words should be familiar to you. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the presence of all peoples. We sing these words, we confess these words every single week. We confess it because we have received Christ every single week. Where do we sing these words? Right after the Lord's Supper right after we receive the body and blood of Christ, right after we ourselves hold the sacrifice which has been prepared for all people. We confess this along with Simeon, because just like Simeon, we are holding the body of Christ. Just like with Simeon, we can now rest assured that the warfare is ended, our sin has been covered, we are or have received salvation. We now have life eternal. <coughs> and now, having received the very body and blood of Christ, very personally and very physically, we get to confess along with Simeon, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. We get to say, Lord, I'm at peace now. It's okay if I die. Because I know my sin has been atoned for. I know that I am coming to your side in heaven. And I know that you are now raising me up along with Jesus at the last day. 
So as we come up to communion, as we receive the body and the blood of our Lord, let us consider these words that we are singing after the Lord's Supper and confess along with Simeon, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise.